Okay, so there's two buckets full of Mary's hats and uh, jewelry, anything you want to wear of hers. I just need it back when we get to the church. So anything oh, thanks. Oh. My grandma Dorothy said that each generation moves the world one step left towards justice. I <laughs> hope so. We each do our part, and eventually, decade by decade, we bring on the beloved community. And we're all turned around with flowers on our hands. Mary, where we When she was in prison, she took advantage of the situation and taught the other women how to read. I have learned a lot in Bisbee, and I'm just so delighted that I could serve a little. And there's so much to be done. Don't anyone here think that because they can't do everything, it lets them off the hook for not doing a little. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I want to thank you all for coming. This is in memory of beautiful Mary Adams. She'll be with our community forever. Uh, you may sing, you can walk in silence, you can do whatever you want. Mary wants us just to gather and respect her and honor her peaceful actions and her loving family and friends. So thank you for being here. We shall live in peace. We shall live in Everybody does their own thing in Bisbee. <laughs> Mary's here. She's smiling. Yeah, she is. <laughs> it's all good. And the weeds do wave in. And the dust clouds rolling. Rolling. <laughs> <laughs> All your dreams are away. See how they shine. I don't know this one. <laughs>
See how much you were loved. XXOO, Debbie. Thank you. I stood for peace while I stood for every Friday night that I can make it. And that's how I met Mary. And we had a lot in common. We went to some of the same anti-war protests. We uh, both agreed that when we heard Martin Luther King give the Beyond Vietnam speech is when we both got hit the streets to protest the war. So we, our lives kind of were in sync and then we met here in Bisbee many, many years later. And she really embodied the spirit of Bisbee more than any other person I ever met. She just, the political side, the crazy side, the fun side, the music side, she just was all of it. She was just all rolled into one. But mostly me and Mary just had our own little private moments. We talked about men and love and sex. And we didn't talk so much politics, you know. She was like that and so was I, but you know, we were just women. And I really loved her for that too. I know Mary's with me every time I stand for peace, and um, we have a community of people that are fierce with our love for life, and I honor Mary's life. So I'm going to just end with something that she gave me that she wanted me to read, and I know you probably heard her read it, and she probably would do a better job. Um, this is the Mother's Day proclamation uh, from uh, Julia Ward Howe, and uh, it was written in 1907. Arise, all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears. Say firmly, we will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us breathing with carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity, mercy, and patience. We women of one country will be too tender of those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure others. From the bottom bosom of this devastated earth, a voice goes up with our own. It says, disarm, disarm. Oh. The sword is not the balance of justice. Blood does not wipe our dishonor, nor violence indicate possession. As men have often forsaken the plow and the anvil at the summons of war, let women now leave all that they have to be left of home for a great and earnest day of counsel. Let them meet first as women to bewail and commemorate, commemorate the dead. Let them then solemnly take counsel with each other as to the means whereby the great human family can live in peace, each learning after his own time the sacred impress, not of Caesar, but of God. In the name of womanhood and of humanity, I earnestly ask that a general congress of women without limit of nationality may be appointed and held at some place deemed most convenient and at the earliest period consistent with its objects to promote the allegiance of the different nationalities, the amicable settlement of international questions, and the great and general interests of peace. Um, I didn't know Mary, but uh, I have a friend in Tucson who, from the time I met her three years ago, kept talking about somebody named Walking Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get it, unfortunately, until now, when every, now I get it, why she was special. So my friend is, had, couldn't be here today, and she, um, I'm going to read what she wrote for her. Her, oh, her name is Utopia. It's her friend. No, so. I was at an anti-nuclear demonstration in Illinois when Walking Mary was arrested with other brave anti-nuclear protesters. Having recently moved to Arizona, when I found out that Mary lived in Bisbee, Arizona, we became fast friends. 
Over the 18 years of our friendship, she visited me a number of times in Tucson, and I visited her in Bisbee. After she stepped over the military line at Oak Ridge National Nuclear Laboratory in Tennessee, I followed her journey into prison. She amazed me with her ability to use the jail time to help other prisoners learn to read. Mary was a natural teacher because she walked without fear towards a world of justice for all. Her deep spiritual insight gave her the courage to be a trailblazer for peace. When she got out of prison and started working back in the Bisbee community, she was very interested in helping establish a local radio station. Once the station was broadcasting, she absolutely loved doing her radio show that announced weekly social and progressive political events happening around the Bisbee area. Her goal was to spread the word of activist actions that they too could participate in. When her show was canceled, it broke her heart. Acting for peace was one thing. Finding a life partner who shared her passion for justice was mm -hmm. another. <laughs> she loved men even when love was not returned. Yes, Mary was a lover anyway. After her debilitating stroke, and she was living at Devon Gables Rehabilitation Center in Tucson, I was fortunate enough to visit her a number of times. Such centers can be depressing to visit. It was difficult for Mary to talk and to move. It was a while before she was well enough for her feeding tube to be removed. But to my surprise, she had found a sisterhood with her roommate who also <coughs> suffered from a stroke, Gloria. Gloria and Mary were soul sisters who shared the same vibe and liked the same TV shows, which was really important when you share a room and a TV screen. They kept each other company. Mary would sing to Gloria, and Gloria would encourage Mary to sing, even if it was the middle of the night. <laughs> the relationship was so beautiful that it sparkled up the dismal dying odors of the nursing home. Visiting the two friends became a joy for me because it gave me faith that the universe brings the right people together. The moral of Walking Mary's story is this. You never know when and where you will find love, even in the darkest, most dystopian of places and times on Earth. That's from Utopia. Oh, nice.